Yo, what's up everyone? It's me again. Uh, hi, uh, hope everyone's leak start plans are going well. Uh, in this video, I want to talk about my plans for 3.23 Affliction. And I want to cover my tree, my atlas strat, as well as how I plan to incorporate some of the cool new mechanics of the next league. So yeah, let's just get right into it. Um, as you guys probably know, I am going to be leak starting with Bone Shatter Jug in SSF. And this is basically the POB that I'm going to be running with. I'm going to try to not cover this in too much detail because I already have several guides on this build. And basically most of it is the same. There are a couple of different things in this build specifically than last build um, or my last builds of you know this archetype. So I'll just talk through those briefly, but yeah, um, the main reason I chose to go Bone Shatter is because it got buffed. Uh, trauma got buffed from 4% damage to 5%, so that's, you know, just a straight up buff for the build. And then there's also this really interesting gem, Bone Shatter of Complex Trauma, that was released uh, today, in fact. And I think it is good. And I'm going to cover this as well, as well as do some theory crafting around this uh, soon. But yeah, my main reason for going Jug is basically, I think this is going to be really good in Ultimatum. Like getting this Unbreakable node allows you to be ridiculously tanky in Ultimatum. More so than Slayer, which has a problem defending against elemental attacks. And I think there's quite a few elemental attacks that you want to mitigate in Ultimatum. In addition, if I do need to run lab, Jug is going to be really nice to run lab. And then also finally, uh, you know, if I'm going to be going into Wisp land or whatever the new side area is called, I like to call it Wisp land because there's a lot of wisps in there. Um, you can actually get jumped by like random mobs, like out of the darkness. And if I'm going to like be attacked before I can attack, I would rather be a Jug than a Slayer because Slayer is Val Pact, and if I get attacked, my life is going to go down and then not go up. But if I'm a Jug and I get attacked, my life will go up. So I'm pretty excited to play Bone Shatter Jug next league. I think it'll be really good. And yeah. So then going into this build that I'm going to play, this is basically a standard tree for Bone Shatter Jug. Nothing too remarkable. It's just precise technique, impale, fizz damage, two-handed axe build. Um, uh, and then the gems is basically your six link bone shatter, melee totems, and then your auras like war banner, determination, pride, arrogance, precision for your precise technique, and then berserk, which I have off in this POB, leap slam, faster attacks, frost blink, and then the most important setup, of course, the CWDT, because this will always trigger when you're doing bone shatter. You just have a level one CWDT level 7 Blood Rage, 5 Vulnerability, and then 10 Molten Shell. And this is the optimal CWDT setup. You can also decrease the level of Vulnerability to 1 to help with mana cost if you need to. Um, yeah. So that's basically the build. And then the only other thing that's different from this to previous builds is that um, I learned that you can actually use Iron Reflexes to get a, lar a large amount of armor with your uh, body armor if you go for a strength deck space. And the reason for this is that for some reason, this uh, unbreakable node, it actually comes into effect after iron reflexes. So normally on a glorious plate, you could only get like 3000 armor on the very top end. But here I have an armor evasion piece with only tier three hybrid and 20 quality only. And this already gives me like 3,200 base armor, right? So like if I scaled it harder, I could probably get like 3,500, maybe even close to 4,000, which is like a lot more armor than you could get on a glorious plate. So apparently that's the strat now. Play Jug, take Unbreakable, uh, Unbreakable, go for armor evasion base, and then just, yeah take iron reflexes. Um, and then the reason I'm not using strength decks on my other armor is basically just because um, it's easier to roll like accuracy on a strength base. 
And I think that going suppression on a jug is extra and not necessary since the ascendancy already has so much defense and you really don't want to be putting points in more defense. Like every point in my end game POB is like 200k damage and I only have 5.2 mil damage. So like I can't really justify taking four suppression nodes to like increase my max hit by a little bit but then lose out on like a whole 1 million damage, which is like 20% of my damage, right? Like I would not exchange 20% of my overall damage for suppression. And for the same reason, I don't take max res because if I took this again, four skill points and like taking this would increase my Ellie hit by like 20%, but it would also decrease my damage by 20% because 200K per point. So I opt to go for as much offense as I can when playing Jug, and then only take the necessary defense nodes if you really need them. For example, this node is really important, endurance charge on hit, and then this node's also really important because it allows you to sustain trauma a lot better. And then of course, the more physical damage you prevent, the more regen you get from this, right? So you have to take some defensive nodes, but I try to take as little as possible in softcore. Soul of Steel, I think, is really good to take. This is like three points for like 12k armor and max res. I think this is worth taking. But yeah, got to be careful when building defense on the jug. Anyway, so yeah, bas back to the itemization. Yeah, so I chose to go for Strength Dex Body for Iron Reflexes and Unbreakable. And then uh, Strength Helmet and Gloves to make it easier to roll uh, accuracy. And then the boots, I just went with a strength base. You could also go for like strength dex, but it doesn't matter too much. I would rather not have suppression on the suffix so I can have an easier time rolling other things that are good. And then everything else is just standard, you know, Stygian Vice, uh, Murderous Eye Jewel, get an attack speed life jewel, uh, Stygian Vice with crafted armor evasion for iron reflexes, and then amethyst rings to help you cap out on chaos res. Uh, triple Elrion craft to sustain mana and not not need to use life tap anywhere. Uh, allocate cleaving for intimidation, and then the implicits are gonna be um, just like recoup reservation, determ effect for trauma sustain, and then non curse auras. Uh, strike skills target one additional enemy, of course, and then also impale chance. And then this build does feature. 100% impale chance, which is really important for scaling single target damage. So it has 20 from the weapon, the crafted betrayal mod, and then 10% from the anointment, or sorry, not from the anointment, 10% from the glove implicit, 20% from the weapon unveil craft, and then the rest I think I'm just getting on the skill tree. I take this harpooner wheel and then merciless skewering. And then yeah, and then before before you get the impale implicit on your glove, you can just anoint a forceful skewering here, and that helps you get your ten percent impale chance. And then once you get the glove implicit, you can change this to cleaving for intimidate. Um, and then before you have cleaving, you can either just allocate this normally, or you can like use an attack mastery to get that. Intimidate while you have rage, although I think the additional strike is still better. And then as for crafted mods, yeah, you know, just basically whatever. Um, I'm getting a uh, shock immune from Garricon, and then I'm getting chill freeze immune because I'm a jug, and then I take soul of Solaris to get additional PDR on single target, and also a little bit of, yeah, just whatever stuff. Mostly just for the physical damage reduction. Although, I guess I could also take other things. It doesn't really matter. Cool. Okay, so that's basically the build that I'm going to be running. And then, of course, the spike damage of this build can go up drastically as well if you have everything up. So, if I have like my Val Warchief, 6.4 million damage. If I have Berserk, 10 million damage. If I have Maximum Rage, you know, 12 million damage, right? So this build definitely 
I think will be pretty solid. And then I have a hundred thousand armor like base. And if I press granite, 128. And if I press basalt, 154, right? So a lot of pretty good defense and pretty good offense in my opinion. Okay, so next I want to talk about a, a thing that you can do with a new gem, which was released today, called Bone Shatter of Complex Trauma. More like Bone Shatter of Login, and let me demonstrate why. So this gem, compared to the base Bone Shatter, let's investigate. All right, so the one on the left is the basic Bone Shatter, and the one on the right is the new one. Okay, so as you can see, most of it is the same. The mana cost, attack speed, attack damage, effectiveness of added damage, and the base physical damage, the melee strike range, you know, the trauma mechanic, gaining one trauma on hit, trauma lasting six seconds is all, you know, the same. The, you know, the, pull, the area of effect per stun duration is also the same. The only thing that's different is that Bone Shatter of Complex Trauma causes you to gain 20% more damage per trauma rather than 4%, which is 5% in the next patch, but it's 20% more damage per trauma, right? However, you lose all trauma on reaching 10 trauma. So optimally, what you want to do is you want to stay at 9 trauma all the time. And then you can basically increase your ramp speed a lot, right? Because if because normally Bone Shatter Jug can go up to 40 trauma, but it takes forever at 5 APS to get 40 trauma. That's like eight seconds of like straight up attacking, right? Bone Shatter of Complex Trauma can ramp up to maximum damage in two seconds, which is crazy. However, the problem then is how the heck can you actually stay at nine trauma always? Well, it turns out that I'm about to show you how you could do it. So trauma lasts for six seconds, right? So the first thing you need to do is you need to optimize your attack speed and your trauma duration. You want to bring your trauma duration and attack speed down so that you can stay at nine trauma all the time. In order to stay at nine trauma all the time, what you would need to do is... So I, I'm going to take this build, right? I'm going to open a copy and then I'm going to like refactor the build to use Bone Shatter of Complex Trauma. So first thing that you would need to do is run less duration support. The worst link here is probably, I don't know, Fortify. So you get rid of Fortify and we're going to look at the damage numbers very carefully. So we get rid of Fortify and then we run reduced duration or less duration. And then this allows the Bone Shatter Trauma duration to go all the way down to 2.46, but that's not enough. We also have to change our anointment to the reduced skill effect duration thing here, window of opportunity. So you're gonna change this to that. Okay, now we have successfully reduced the duration of trauma to 2.09 right? You can see it right there. If we have 2.09 trauma duration, then the attack speed that you need to sustain nine stacks is exactly 4.3, right? So you want to have 4.3 attack speed or less. What is the most optimal way that we can get attack speed? Well, it turns out that my Bone Shatter build by default has 4.8, which is way too high. There's no way I can go down to 4.3. You know, However, this is another cool thing that the gem allows you to do, which is you no longer need to run Ancestral Protector because you want your attack speed to go down to 4.3, right? So what you can do is get rid of Panopticon and then you get rid of Ancestral Protector. The damage number is going to go down, but it's actually going to go up once I factor in Trauma. So I get rid of Protector, I get rid of multiple totems. This allows me to... Uh, this allows me to free up two sockets by doing this. And then I can basically put those points into Fortify since I removed my Fortify support. So I need to get that back. So we'll just path through maximum fortification, melee hits Fortify like this, right? 
and then now you can see the attack speed is all the way down to 3.73 right however we do need to get that a little bit higher we need to get the attack speed to uh 4.3 right so then i also then need to adjust this pob to uh account for rage because you don't want you have a rage mastery here right you gotta account for the rage you don't want the rage to make your attack speed go up too high and then mess up your breakpoint so you gotta change the rage here to 50. and then now we have a 4.06 aps right um but it's not enough you want to get as close to 4.3 as possible so there's basically two ways to get more attack speed from this point. Um, you could drop Soul of Steel and you just drop like 10,000 armor, or you could drop this physical damage node here and lose like a little bit of DPS. Um, I Whatever the math for the trauma is, I don't know, but let's hypothetically say that you drop Soul of Steel, um, or, or let's hypothetically say you drop Soul of Steel you drop your endurance charge and then you drop this and then what how how you would get to 4.3 well first of all you have to take this now for intimidate but you can go here and this would give you armor because it's iron reflexes right and you have perma onslaught because of the essence crafted body with onslaught on hit and then this allows you to get 4.22 aps which is pretty damn close to 4.3 and this is level 92 so you have three points back and then you could uh, choose to take Soul of Steel again, bringing your armor from 100k to 112, or if you're already sustaining trauma, you can take Bastion Breaker for 300k more damage. Probably I would just recommend taking Soul of Steel. Okay, cool. All right, so at this point, this is level 95. It's the same build, right, as the other one, but now we have to factor in the effect of the new trauma, like from the complex bone shatter. So first of all, in order to make the calculations the same, let me go to the old one. This is the default one. I'm gonna pop in 50 rage. Okay, so here, this is 6.2 million DPS, right? And what is my trauma stack sustain? How can I get 6.25? Uh, okay, so this build can take 31 stacks of trauma, right? Um, in order to account for the buff that raises the trauma stack damage from 4% more to 5% more, we have to modify this value by 25% more. So if it's 32, that would raise it to 40. So next league, this build is going to do 7 million base damage, right? So then let's account for the trauma in the new build with complex bone shatter or bone shatter of complex trauma. So Bone Shatter of Complex Trauma is going to give us, where is that shit? It's going to give us 20% more damage per trauma, right? So then when I have nine stacks of trauma, I'm at 180, right? 180 divided by four is uh, 45. So that would basically be 45 stacks of trauma for the purposes of POB calculation, right? 4% trauma per stack in the old config, and then 9 stacks of 20% trauma is 180, and then 180 divided by 4 is uh, 45. So this new variant, as you can see here, has uh, 4.9 million total damage, right? However, it does also, which seems worse, it seems worse right off, wait, do I have precise technique? Okay, I do have precise technique. Okay, so this seems worse, but it's not the end of the world because I think there's another interesting thing that you can do, which is quality. So, uh, so Bone Shatter of Complex Trauma, I mean, it, this gem is listed as 20% quality, right? I assume that the quality is giving more damage because if you look at these other gems, right? Oh, does it not say? Wait. Oh. Wait, does it say what 
what the effect of quality is on these new gems or not. It does say, right? Like, there's a lot of these that have multiples of 20. I would assume that the quality on complex trauma gives you more damage per trauma. I can't confirm this, but it would appear to do so. I would guess that it's like 1% more damage per trauma per quality. That's what I would assume. And if that's the case, now this is getting into like pseudoscience territory, but if this if that's the case, which is what I was assuming initially, what you could literally do is you could change your weapon to have the unveil quality, which can go up to 10% if you can unveil that shit. Right? So like if you you can Ashling this, you can veiled chaos it. So like hypothetically speaking, um if I changed my weapon, let's say, but the, the cost of this is you have to give away, you know, one of the fizz damage mods, but let's hypothetically say that we removed the hybrid modifier. My damage goes down for now, but then I can, you know, get like veiled quality or something. 10% Tem chance to quality. Um, let me double check my precise technique. I am precise technique. Okay, so hypothetically, if everything is working the way that I think it's going to work, if you can increase the quality by 10% and then put your six link bone shatter in your main hand, um, that would allow you, hypothetically speaking, big emphasis on hypothetically, to raise the more damage multiplier per trauma from 20 to 30. That would give you 50% more scaling from your trauma. So then what you could do is you go here, instead of being at 45 stacks, this is now 50% more, so you add like 22. So now it's like 67 stacks of trauma, right? And then now you basically have a build that's like 5.4 million damage with a six link bone shatter in your main hand with juiced up quality. Um, and the benefit of this is that this damage is like, the it ramps a lot faster, right? This build is still more damage on paper, but you also need to put down two totems, three totems actually, and this build ramps up the full damage in eight seconds. This build, while having less damage, ramps up to maximum damage in two seconds, right? That's like a 400% increased ramping speed. So I think the Bone Shatter of Complex Trauma gem is good. If I drop it, if I can find a way to get it, I think I will take it. I think I will literally use it. I would basically do exactly what I'm doing here and just, yeah, I would just use it straight up. I think it'll result in a pretty cool build. And the, the faster ramping of trauma is going to make single target damage so much easier, in my opinion. So that's my theory craft on that. That's my theory craft on Bone Shatter of Complex Trauma. Um, now, again, the biggest hypothetical is does quality give you 1% more damage per trauma per stack? Because if it does, then you can get a pretty nice damage boost. If it doesn't, well, your damage is going to be 500k less or something, right? But yeah, that's my little theory craft. Anyway... Feel free to make of that as you will. I may be wrong. This is theory crafting. If I'm wrong, I take full responsibility. But it seems like this math is sound. So hopefully, preach. Okay. So then, uh, going on to the Atlas tree. So I'm gonna try a little bit something different. So this is my end game tree, right? This is the same as every single league. It's basically just expedition for gear progression. Harvest for gear progression, end game map drops for Atlas progression, Exarch for currency progression, block everything except Harvest, Expedition, and then Betrayal for, you know, XP and uh, I guess a small amount of item and currency progression. And then just Shrines for faster mapping speed, in addition to allowing you to uh, do Ultimatum a lot better because Shrines is OP. And then of course Essence because Bone Shatter Jug is really good at killing Essences. Here, I path through Remnant of Corruption to get Essence of Insanity for the chest, but once you get enough Corruptions, you can just path here as well. Doesn't really matter. 
Okay. So this is like the tree I go for every league. It's basically not changed. Um, but I want to try like a different strategy at league start. So like what I want to do at league start is actually I want to try this wandering path strat that some people have been doing. The main idea is you go for a wandering path uh, right off the bat. And then you try to rush 100% chance for a one monster to drop a connected map. So you just take all these random 4% uh, connected map drop nodes until it's totaling 100%. And then you take these map things here to get map drops higher chance. And this one here also. And then you can also take these Kirak things here just to make sure that you have Kirak missions. And I've never done this strat before, but a lot of good players are doing it. So I want to try to do it as well. And the main idea here is basically you do Wandering Path, you go to T16s, and you do Eater Exarch as soon as possible. And if you can do that fast, you can get two Void Stones very fast, which will give you a total of like 50% increased chance to drop maps one tier higher, right? And that'll greatly help out your map sustain early on. And then once you get that, you can basically respec into whatever you want after you get the first two Void Stones. And also, I think the strat is good because if you get a T16s fast, it makes everything else more rewarding, right? Like Expedition, Harvest, Altars, all of these things only like truly unlock their like farming potential in T16s. So yeah, I'm going to try to do Wandering Path uh, at League Start. Uh, the only like thing about this that is like a little bit iffy is that like if the build is not strong enough to kill Exarch and Eater on like a four link on day one or day two, then that's going to be pretty messed up for you. Um, but I guess the, I guess the trade-off here is you have to make sure that you can progress your character enough to kill Eater and Exarch on a four link in Bone Shatter or whatever your main skill is for this to work. So I would, I would maybe not recommend this for new players. But I think like for, for me, I can do this. So I'm going to try to do this. And then once I get my two Void Stones, I'm planning to respec into Expedition. Um, just basically take the Logbook node, take these two nodes up here, uh, Stream of Consciousness, and then uh, block everything except Expedition. And then you can take these map drop nodes just in case, and then spec out of Wandering Path. And then also the Kirak node here, or the Scouting Report node. And I think this is going to be able, this is going to allow me to sustain maps in reds, hopefully. And then just like farm a bunch of expedition, get a bunch of money from Tujin, and then get a bunch of good items from Rog, hopefully. And then I want to do this and then eventually build into my endgame tree in no particular order. Probably just go for like essence next because Bone Shatter is really good at killing essences. And then maybe after essence... Exarch Altars, so I can get my plus one strike. And then, I don't know, Essence, Exarch, uh, Betrayal, Harvest, and then probably finish with Endgame Map Drops. Something like this, right? Yeah, and that's basically the plan that I'm going to go for for my Atlas Strat. If you're a new player, I would probably not recommend Wandering Path. I'd probably recommend starting off with something like this, which is just easy map sustain, and then Kirak, and then Expedition. I would just go straight for this if you're like not confident in your ability to kill Exarch, or progress your character to an ability where you could do it. Okay, and then another thing I wanted to talk about was uh, the new Ascendancy choice for this build. Uh, so I'm going to be going for... Uh, Warden of the Magi. I think this is going to be really sick on Bone Shatter. Um, I think some of these tinctures are just insane. This is the one that allows you to apply tinctures to your weapons, right? So probably you take Oath of the Magi early on for campaign. Maybe. I don't know because I don't know how many sockets I'm going to need. So maybe I take this, maybe I don't. But these tinctures, they've only revealed like these two tinctures or maybe more. But like even just revealing these tinctures, you can clearly see that this ascendancy is completely insane for Bone Shatter. Um, if you get Culling Strike on a jug, that is basically free, like, well, I don't know, it's more than 10%. 
it, it's like what I, I don't know, it's like nine divided by ten or ten divided by nine. It's like eleven percent more damage or something. I don't really know what the math is, but basically, Juggernaut Bone Shatter has a hard time getting Culling Strike. Like I don't even have Culling Strike on my POB because I don't even know where I would get that shit. Um, I got, maybe maybe you can take like a Mark. Ma Wait, you wouldn't even take a Mark Mastery because you use Vulnerability. All right, never mind. So. Yeah, I mean, basically, this Culling Strike one by itself is good. It's just, like, 11% more damage, like, in general. So, obviously, it's good. And then whatever mods you get on it are just going to be insane as well. So, it's just, like, a free power creep. And then this one is the one that is the most intriguing. Actually, someone in my Discord server pointed this out, but... Basically, the idea here is that if you can use this on on Bone Shatter Jug, you can always stun enemies on full life, right? Then what you would do is you would combo it with Warlord's Mark, which states, Cursed enemies regenerate 20 rage when stunned. Uh, Cursed enemies regenerate 20 rage over one second when stunned. Then what you would do is you would automate the casting of Warlord's Mark in the CWDT. So you would just not use vulnerability and you would use Warlord's Mark in mapping. And then on single target, you can swap to vulnerability because you're not going to be stunning a single target. But in mapping, you swap out vulnerability for Warlord's Mark. And then the tincture makes you permanently stun enemies. And then that allows you to get permanent rage generation all the time. This is going to be particularly insane in Ultimatum because there's always going to be monsters at full health spawning all the time in Ultimatum. So you're just constantly stunning stuff, you're constantly generating full rage, and you just pop Berserk all the time. You have like Perma Berserk and Ultimatum. I don't see why this would not work. Seems totally insane for Ultimatum and like something like Sim as well if you want to do that. So this is definitely some tech that I want to try. And then of course the, uh, you know, the, the CWDT loop in Bone Shatter is going to continually cast Warlord's Mark. Um, especially if you're using Bone Shatter of Complex Trauma, because Bone Shatter of Complex Trauma causes you to take 497 damage per trauma, right? So this is like, it helps you reach the CWDT threshold sooner, if that matters. So yeah, I think this Ascendancy with the stun on hit with Warlord's Mark synergy with Berserk is going to be unhinged. I think it's going to be really good. So I'm excited to try that out, see if it actually works. And then in addition to taking this node, I guess you have three more ascendancy points. I, we still don't know what bark skin is. Maybe it's good, maybe it's not. Maybe it has some synergy with iron reflexes. Who knows? They haven't revealed it, so we don't know. But we'll have to see what this gives us. This node is probably not good because it's not like consistent. So then you would probably just take this. And then maybe this if it's good. Otherwise, you would just take these two here. Um, I think this one is maybe not so good. Um, yeah, this one's whatever. But this one's pretty good, right? You just put the tincture somewhere. And then you can like make your granite and quicksilver flask. Just like gain charges. And also, they have 30% increased effect. Because Bone Shatter is always hitting an enemy. So then what you would probably do is you would like do a setup where it's like, um, I can probably just show you here. What I would probably do is like, well, let's say the life flask is here. And then I would probably put my, uh, like I would probably put the granite flask here, the quartz flask, I'm oh, sorry, the quicksilver here, the tincture would go here. I would probably just like replace my basalt flask with a tincture. And then I would do like uh, Basalt for single target and then Quartz Flask and mapping for the phasing. And then I'll probably put armor on my Granite Flask and then either movement speed or, a well, yeah, probably just movement speed on this. And then you have like 30% increased effect of this, which is like more armor and more movement speed. And then if you're, if you're going to be doing Bone Shatter of Complex Trauma, you would not want to get attack speed on your flask because that would mess up your breakpoint. But if you're not doing Bone Shatter of Complex Trauma, 
you would probably want to get a tax speed on the Quicksilver and then put that next to the Tincture. So yeah, that's the Tincture strat. And then this is just, you know, I don't know about this one. I don't know like what, what you would use this for, but yeah. I think the Tincture itself is just going to be really good. And then I don't know. Yeah, just whatever else, whatever else you need. Hopefully, hopefully the bark skin skill is good. Copium, hopefully this is good. We don't even know what this is. But yeah, that's basically my strat. I really want to try this out. I think the tincture is going to be just really good power creep on Bone Shatter Jug. And then yeah, that's basically it. And then maybe, 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 maybe if you use Bone Shatter of Complex Trauma, again, I said earlier that that would allow you to not use uh, War Chief or, or it would allow you to not use Protector or multiple totems, right? And then maybe if you do something, I don't know like what you can remove, but maybe you can do something where you remove some more gems and then get like four sockets empty in like your glove and then get like 25% max life. I don't know. I don't know like what other gems that you would remove because everything here is kind of mandatory. I don't know. And then you probably don't want to run unset rings because the amethyst ring is like super good. But yeah, I don't know. It's it's possible. Again, I don't know how you would fit your stuff in, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's possible. Maybe if you have like a super optimized build, you can run like double unset ring. And then that would allow you to have four sockets free exactly with the Bone Shatter of Complex Trauma setup. And then you can use this to get 25% ink max life. You'd have to watch your accuracy though for precise technique though if you do this. But yeah, that's the plan for the Ascendancy. So long story short, Bone Shatter Jug, good build. Bone Shatter of Complex Trauma has some interesting synergy, especially with quality scaling and less duration scaling on Bone Shatter. You take less duration, you get the less duration anoint, you go for 4.3 APS breakpoint, and then you have two seconds to ramp to maximum damage rather than eight, which should drastically improve the build's performance in things like invitations. And then you have the weird synergy between uh, stun on full life tincture and Warlord's Mark giving possible perma berserk in things like ultimatum. And then you have the Culling Strike Tincture as well, which also is good. And then, yeah, Wandering Path Atlas into Expedition, into generic SSF currency and gear progression. And yeah, that's basically my leak start plan, guys. That's basically that's basically it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope like something I said in this video was mentally stimulating. I don't know. Um, I'm going to link these two things here. I'll link both of these POVs, both the normal version and the, uh, the like theoretical, what, what, what do you call it? Bone shatter of complex trauma setup. I'll link both of these and also I'll link these atlas trees as well. Or maybe I'm not going to link these because the links are really long. But yeah, you can basically just like copy this if you want to. And yeah, that's the video. Um, let me know if you have any like ideas or like want to discuss any more things. I think there's a lot of interesting stuff coming to Bone Shatter next league. Um, and hopefully some of it is good and not dog shit. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's the video. Um, uh, I, I'm also going to stream on Twitch for League Start. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Smokey underscore 777. Um, I'm going to stream uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Bone Shatter Jug SSF. And yeah, this might be the last video that I make before League Start. So, you know, Stop by the stream if you're interested. Uh, yeah, uh, that's basically it. Um, yeah, good luck with your league start.